Hey. I mean, Mickelson putts in my garage. Xander, Charlie, Emiliano, Max Homa put in my garage. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's some really good players that have put it in the garage, but not very many. <laughs> so which ball left first? Uh, the right one. Which means your face was what? Closed. Yeah. That's genius. Single digit cut spin. That gets you. Today we are back with maybe the best putting coach of all time. He is the coach for Xander Shoffley, Phil Mickelson, and maybe all the other great pros. And today you're gonna get an exclusive look because not only are we getting a lesson from him, we are doing it at his home. Let's go. When I strike the ball, am I leaning the shaft forward? Well, if I lean the shaft forward, what would the ball do? Go up. Oh, go. Oh, if you're hitting it? It'd go down. Yeah. If I, if I hit it with the shaft leaning backwards, Yeah the ball's gonna go up into the air. Mm -hmm. Well, the first one is 0.47 adding loft backwards. The next one is 0.21 leaning forward. The next one is 0.82 backwards. The next one is zero. The next one is 1.2 uh, backwards, 1.8 backwards, zero. 0.7 forwards, backwards, backwards. So you're forward, you're backward, you're forward, you're backward, you're forward, you're backward. So if I change the lean of the shaft, I'll change my launch angle. So this is a setup thing for me to see if, if that works, mm -hmm. if that helps. Now, I could also bend the putter. I could take the putter from four degrees of loft to 2.75 and just let you go and your launch angle would probably be pretty good. I'm wondering though, I wanna like keep, because I wonder if this is kind of, uh, what if I do it again and without bending it and then all of it's the other way. So I, you know, I, I wanna like, Get more data. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's what we're gonna do next. Okay. Cool. We're gonna we're gonna like hit a bunch of putts, mm -hmm. and we're gonna record them. So set up to the next putt. Oh, if your face didn't have the technology in it to get more forward roll, more of those numbers, backspin numbers, would be bad. Would have been red. Yeah. If you had a basic, very popular metal milled putter, mm -hmm. all those numbers would have had backspin. Yeah, so this is assisted. The right technology here. in that face is good for overspin. It might not be good for something else, but it's surely good for overspin. I love it because I can wear my sandals at home. <laughs> if, I, if I could teach in a t-shirt and shorts and sweats, I would. So go ahead and take your setup. So now I'm going to change something, okay, in how you set up. So right now, the butt end of the putter is pointed towards your sternum. Yeah. I want it pointed there. That's enough. That's, that's, in fact, that might even be too much. Yeah. So all I'm doing is putting your left hand over the golf ball before you start. Get to where you used to be. So do you see I'm taking the shaft and I'm leaning it a little bit this way? Yeah. There. That's enough. Now, you have to return it there. You can't all of a sudden return it to a different lean. So I've pushed your hands into what I would call a forward press. Your handle is forward towards the target. Yeah. Does it feel strange or does it feel? It feels like I'm gonna hit this straight. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So the handle is pressed forward ever so slightly mm -hmm. and then just go for it. Hit a putt. Okay, so, okay. So the shaft angle is leaning forward 1.24 degrees. Yeah. You hit down on it, that's okay, I'm not talking about that. You still launched it at 1.15. He started his stroke leaning the shaft forward at 1.73 degrees. So he was 1.73 this way. But during the stroke, he added loft to it, which means the hand, it didn't stay there. It, it kind of went backwards a little bit, a half a degree. So the shaft angle at impact was 1.24. Because this number minus this number equals that number. So you, you changed it. You didn't return it where it was. Got if it. you had, I see. we'd be much closer to two degrees. Got it, got it. It wouldn't be quite two degrees or under. So there was some wristy thingy going on. Okay. Okay? Yep. Let's change that. That's, we're not going to do that. No bueno. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is our second time together. <laughs> and I'm putting you through like some next level <laughs> yeah. This ain't. <laughs> what not, not normal people around. do, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Mickelson puts in my garage. Yeah. Like Xander, Charlie, Emiliano, like Max Homa put in my garage. Like, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. some really good players that have put it in the garage, but not very many. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I got to get a, a better studio because these guys want to. Xander doesn't care. He didn't give a. <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> he just wants to get better. 
So you're gonna do this again, but you're gonna have your hands pointed a little bit towards the table. If there's a mirror between me and you, your hands are going this way. And yes, now go for it. I think you did better. I think I did I better. think you did better. I think I did better. I'm trying to watch the shaft. I think you did better. We'll, we'll, we'll know I think with I, what the ball's doing. I, so you, you hit it into the ground that time. So look at this, four degrees of forward press, 3.6 degrees, and you hit uh, zero, but that down. So yeah, if, you, if, you're, if your putter is four degrees aloft, yeah. right? Yeah. And you hit down, and you're at negative 3.7 degrees aloft, you might hit the ball into the fibers. So you overdid it. Yay. So let's do it again. So you don't want to hit it into the ground, you don't want to chip it in the air. Because if you, ch if you hit it in the ground, you're not going to be able to control the launch of the ball. It's going to be bouncing around. So should I be feeling this go up a little or no? Like uh, Let's cross that bridge in a second. Okay. So naturally, if I move the shaft forward, the club, I don't care what club it is, the club is going to want to go up right away. Mm -hmm. Well, if it goes up right away, it's going to want to come down. Yeah. Well, as if I go here, the, put the club doesn't want to go up. It wants to stay along the ground and then it's gonna, and now I don't wanna hit the ground back here, so then I wind up going up. Mm -hmm. So there's a fine line with where your hands are yep. and how the putter swings in terms of AOA, angle of attack. Yeah. I gotta teach you all the terminology. <laughs> I'll write down the acronyms in a book. <laughs> and so like, basically I'm coming back here and I don't wanna go higher here because I'm just gonna come down at it in a sense. Should I just gradually? Well, well, well hang on a second, hang on. What's the easiest way to change how the putter's moving into the ball? I don't know. This is way too easy. Because you're gonna do this in your full swing too. Chipping, full swing, is everything. Yeah. If I putted with the ball on my, on my right foot, yep. is the putter gonna move down to the ball or up? Down. If I putted this ball off my left foot, is the putter gonna move up or down? Oh, up, yeah. If I change the ball position, I can change my angle of attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it doesn't work for everybody. But that's pretty basic. You're like, well, should I swing up? Well, I don't want you to try and do something that if we just change the ball position, it might fix it. Remember, we said cause and effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could simply move the ball farther forward in your stance and you would hit up on it more. Yeah. If you move the ball back in your stance, you would hit down on it more. But here's the caveat. Mm -hmm. The path changes. If I move the ball back in my stance, my putter is probably gonna be moving to the right of my target line mm -hmm. because the putter is swinging on an arc. It's swinging on an inclined plane, Yeah. okay? If I all of a sudden move the ball farther forward in my stance, by the time I get to it, is the putter moving up? Yes, mm -hmm. but it's also probably moving to the left Yeah. because it's on an inclined plane. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful of how much we move it. Now, dude, we're talking like a degree. Yeah, like fractions. <laughs> yeah, I mean a degree on like a, a little measurement tool, it's like that's a degree. Yeah. Like if I sat back here where she is filming mm -hmm. and I was looking at your path and you were like one or two degrees off, like to the left or to the right, I can't see that. Yeah. Not with my naked eye. Yep. I can see it with a machine and computers and like high speed cameras. Yeah. But I can't see it with the naked eye. Yep. So that's, you know. Now, does it make a difference? Yeah, it makes a difference. But if you want to hit up on it, rather than you thinking about, oh, I need to hit up, I need to hit up, smooth ball position forward. Yeah. We're not going to do that yet. Okay. We're not, we need, I want to see a pattern of a low launch first, and I want to see what your angle of attack is, and then we can go, all right, dude, you need to move the ball up like a quarter of an inch. Okay. Or a half an inch, or two inches. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever that, that number is. Well, uh, that's what I was saying. This is kind of next level stuff, and like your normal am isn't going to be doing this, but you're not trying to be a normal. <laughs> I mean, you're trying to you're trying to be a scratch player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you go out and play for money, you want to be able to play to to your handicap. I'm trying to take everyone's money and take everybody's cash, man. So we're talking about forward shaft lean at address, not your body, just the shaft. Go for it. Oh man. Who cares? Who cares? I'm just looking at the launch. Yeah. Holy <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. 1.45 launch, 36 RPMs of forward roll, only six RPMs of side spin, tilted spin axis. There's, you were constant with your acceleration. Your face was just a little open. And you hit up on the golf ball 2.56 degrees. 
But the ball data is what I'm looking at right now. Like I don't necessarily need to see the club data. Yeah. But your shaft angle is forward 1.37. So now you lean the shaft nicely on that one. Okay. Repeat it. All right, so forward shaft lean. That's enough, go for it. Okay. Mm. Yeah, man, <laughs> one degree launch. So when we get this right, yeah, and yeah. they're all green, I call it St. Patty's Day. We just passed it. St. Patrick's Day, baby. That's a good day. <laughs> so 34 RPMs of overspin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ball didn't, it started its forward rotation as soon as you hit it. Yeah, it yeah. didn't take two and a half inches. Now we're talking about speed control. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like leaving the ball, leaving, the ball is leaving the putter face, like turning over instead of ch chipping in the air backwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay? You have two single digit si side spin, cut spin. That's, that gets chicks. <laughs> so let me ask you a question before we hit this next putt. Yep, it should go. Yeah, we're good. How do you feel right now about this data? Are you uh, overwhelmed or are you okay? Uh, I'm getting pieces of it 100% and I, I kind of know what to kind of change, but I'll need to assess it a lot more, obviously. But so, I love seeing all this data. I mean, my, my background is data, so. <laughs> so the only thing we're talking about right now mm -hmm. is the forward lean of the shaft. Yep. That's it. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's because that's correcting the launch. So good. That's too much. That's right about there. Okay. So it's kind of just barely left at your belly button. Yeah. Now I kind of know where it is by looking right here. Yeah. That's fine. Did you hit it into the ground? We'll see. Did the putter move up or down? We'll, we'll see. So the putter's moving down, yeah, and the launch is low, but you're also leaning the shaft too much again. So let's do it again. So, so this is where we're starting to get. You know, the first half of what we did, yeah, was kind of explaining all. Yeah. The yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's go again. Okay. Now I'm going to throw a curveball at you. Okay. Yeah. I want you to move the ball forward in your stance so your feet are going to go towards the camera behind you that's it that's too much yeah okay your hands are in good position go for it so that's my curve ball so we now we've moved two things but they're both pre-swing yep before you started any movement mm -hmm. we move the ball up we move the shaft forward so attack angle went up too much because we moved the ball forward. Yeah. And then all of a sudden your launch went up. Okay. Because you're hitting it on the upswing. Yeah. And you're presenting loft, you're just not presenting a lot of loft. Mm -hmm. So the next one we hit, we're gonna move the ball forward, but not as forward as you just moved it. Okay. Just a little bit less than that. that Was it this much? Oh my. Yeah, just just mess around with it, man. Okay. Just mess around with it. We're, we're okay. Like that. So we've got the ball, um, I don't know, a couple inside your left, couple inches inside your left heel, right? Yeah. Yep, go for it. Let's see how we did. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God. Okay, okay, okay. So, we're not leaning the shaft as much. Yeah. The ball didn't launch high, that high or low. You're 2.3. Yeah. Face angle's blue, that's robot. Yeah, that's great. Attack angle was only up two degrees. Like, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You didn't hit down on it. Yeah. So like I was saying before, you could try and hit up, you could try and hit down, but why not just move the ball position? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I need to launch angle a little lower. Did you, I mean, dude, you're talking about something that <laughs> you, you would never see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. The only reason why we're able to see it is because we got this freaking high-speed camera. Yeah, but I need to be perfect. <laughs> like what? What are we doing here? Well, in okay, let's let's backtrack. So there's going to be a time when you need to just play. Mm -hmm. You didn't. You did. You weren't coming down on a fast break, ready to pull up because <laughs> on on a three on two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you were gonna ball fake one direction and shoot a a, a mid range jump shot. Yeah. You know there was no thought in your mind. You just reacted and, and pulled. Yep. 
And that's how you need to play golf. Now in practice, I agree. Let's get it as perfect as we can get it. Yeah, yeah. When you play and you need to perform, that goes out the window. Yeah, I can't be thinking about all this. But that means you got to do a lot of training. A lot, so it becomes second nature. Yeah, man. I mean, it's not like it's just like look. If you talk to Patrick Cantlay or any of these guys, mm -hmm. guys, I don't teach them. Mm -hmm. The work that they put in when nobody's watching, yeah, is ridiculous. I think that's the best part. But it, it, it is. That's the journey, right? That's the fun part. Yeah. Like Kobe talked about it all the time. Like oh. the process was the fun part. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the performance was just like, dude, I practiced so hard. The performance and the competition was nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yes, we want to be perfect in practice in this room. Yeah. Over and over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And over and over and over, you see that Marshawn Lynch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and over and over, right? Yeah. You want to be perfect as much as you can in practice, but then when it times it comes time to compete, you just got to play. And then if you feel or see or hear something that's like not quite right, like, man, I just hit that putt and I could hear it skipping. Yeah, I had to have done something weird with my launch because mm. you'll go out on the golf on the greens now and you'll hit a putt and you'll hear it go. T -t 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 -t. Yeah. And you'll go, do my launch suck. Yep. But did I hit it up or down? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How? What did it do? Yeah. And then if we know now, so go ahead and take your setup with the ball just a little forward in your stance with a tiny forward press. Tiny forward press. A little more. Handle. Good. And go for it. So if you can do this over and over and over again, and we can start seeing better launch conditions like St. Patty's Day over here. No, that's what I want. Yeah, that's what I 0.79, want. 18 RPMs of overspin, a little bit of cut spin, Yeah. but not freaking bad. Yeah. So, okay, if my face were pretty square, I'm gonna go over here and do something so you can see. So cut spin, just a little bit. But the face was actually a half a degree closed. Do you remember when we went to the ball data? Yeah. A half a degree from 10 feet still goes in. Yeah. From 11 feet still goes in. 12 still goes in, depending on the speed. 15 feet still goes in. A half a degree and nothing, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, like what we just say, in practice, I wanted zero. I wanted blue. I want those face angle numbers blue. Yep. Blue tint. You like Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blue tint. Okay. Well, if the face is closed and my path is literally zero, so face to path is zero, why the hell is there cut spin on it? Why did the ball spin with cut? Mm. Ball launched great. I have a little bit of cut spin, nine RPMs. Negligible, dude. Less than, less than, it's not a two digit number. I'm good. Yeah. Like, I'm good. Why is it happening? Is that because I'm. Bring it in, in so, it. Well, your, your path is zero. Yeah. So the putter was going really straight at the time you made contact. Yeah. And the face was pretty square at the time you made contact. Yeah. You hit it in the heel. The f Remember I said gear effect? Oh. If you hit it on the toe, hook spin. If you hit it on the heel, slice spin. It was your contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what caused the cut spin. Got it. So, so face angle is basically just this, right? And then, but I was basically like this. So you hit that last ball like that, like that, yeah, instead of like that. Mm -hmm. If you'd have hit it like that, it would have hooked. It would have spun this way. Since you hit it like that, it spun clockwise. Okay. Instead of counterclockwise, or just over. Okay. Make sense? Yep. Now, the subject that we were talking about, the ball position, angle of attack, mm -hmm. and shaft lean created what? Look at the numbers on the right. St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's freaking cash money, dude. Yeah, so good I, launch, good roll, and now all of a sudden speed control is going to start getting better. Yep. So I need to really, okay, I already kind of dialed this in. Oh, no, I don't know. That's okay. What are the numbers on the right? Oh, man, the 33. And Why so much hook spin? You hit that one dead in the middle, dude, zero, zero. Oh, Why so much hook spin? If the, if the contact was great and your path is zero again. So I'm just hitting it right here? Nope. Look at the face angle. It's closed. Oh, it's 1.27. The face angle is closed. You can put hook spin on it. 
I see. Like this machine's crazy, man. This is wild. Yeah, this, this is, is that's why like we spend so much time in here. Like if you can create a stroke that's repeatable over, dude, this is second lesson, man. Yeah, this is wild. It's number two. <laughs> okay, yeah. wait till we get to number 500. Like yeah. you're gonna come in here, we'll spend 15 minutes on this machine and we'll go, we'll go, but. Yeah, oh my God. But right now it's like, dude, like everything, like I'm doing different things. Yeah. My face is closed, my face is square, my path is zero, my path is to the right, my path is to the left, my contact's on the toe, my shaft's leaning forward, my shaft's leaning backwards. I'm accelerating, I'm decelerating, I'm, I'm launching, I'm not launching, like all, everything was freaking kind of different. Yeah, well, yeah. not so much anymore, we've got the launch down. So it's the same amount of overspin as hook spin. So the ball's in the air with overspin yeah, and, yeah. sorry, hook spin. So now it's spinning like a bullet. So, okay, think about this for a second. I've got this anchored down into the ground. Yeah. My face is against the edge of the putting plate, mm -hmm. right? I have tees here. If I don't return the face perfectly, mm -hmm. 1.27 degrees, it's gonna hit that left tee. Yeah. Feedback, immediate feedback. If I hit the tee on the right, my face is open. I'm cheating a little bit because this is telling me where my face is aiming at a dress. Yeah. I'm just trying to freaking return it there, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? But at least it's giving me a starting point. And then you can move the thing out of the way and try. So here's a drill. I don't know where they're aiming, but Put your putter right behind that and get the face touching basically both balls at the same time. Mm -hmm. And now go ahead and put it. So which ball left first? Uh, the right one. Which means your face was what? Uh, closed. Yeah. That's genius. <laughs> so if they both leave at the same time, you know your face was equal. equal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if the heel one leaves first, you know it got there first, right? The, yeah. heel, the face was open. Yeah, that's a it, simple drill. I mean, dude, yeah. it doesn't get any more simple than oh that. Oh my God, that's such a, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so, so if the putter face, if, if I had a ball here and a ball here and the putter face came in like this, open, yeah. that heel ball is gonna take off first. If the toe comes in, closed, the toe ball is gonna take off first. So pre-tournament warm up or pre-round warm up, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're just like every other amateur that freaking plays golf. Mm -hmm. You got a three o'clock tee time and you show up at freaking 2.45, <laughs> right? You don't have time to spend 30 minutes on the plates hitting left to righters, right to lefters straight, because that's what my guys do. Yeah, yeah. They'll spend time setting up the plates. Okay, I've got a right to left, I got a left to right, straight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They'll hit a bunch on the right to left, hit a bunch on the left to right, hit a bunch on straight. And if they get it through, get it through, get it through, get it through, get it through on all the different angles, right? Yeah. Well, when the ball's above my feet or below my feet, I know my ball's starting where my face is aimed, because yeah. I'm getting it through the d plate. Mm -hmm. So that's, that tells me before I go out and play, like my ball is starting on where I'm aiming. Yeah. So now I just got to read it correctly and aim and then hit it the right speed and launch it the correctly. Eh, do, we'll all this other, do all this other crap. We'll get all there. Right. But, but if I don't have that mm -hmm. and I'm running late and I got to get to the tee, I can put down a couple balls, put this way, put that direction, put that direction, all different directions to slope. Yeah. And I want those two balls starting at the same time. That'd be worst case scenario. At least I'm getting some feedback of where my face is aimed relative to the direction I'm swinging. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You follow me? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just now thinking like if I could do this position and get this to basically execute, I think I'll get it pretty good. Yeah. Relatively. Well, but you already had the face. Pr I mean, dude, it's not like you're, what's the worst one you've had? One and a half degrees off, a little more than one and a half degrees off? Yeah. That's not that bad, man. <laughs> Is it what I want? Is it what you want? No. It's not what I want. You want it freaking blue tip. Yeah.